final day at SNA 2019. Today we take a final look at the latest naval defense technologies on display on the show floor, such as unmanned systems, the CSC program, radar systems, and UAVs. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Atlas Electronic, a world famous German firm for undersea warfare products. We bring German warfare products to the U.S., plus we have our own. In the mine countermeasure world, we provide the U.S. Navy Seafox, the world's finest expendable mine neutralizer that's used from our ships and our aircraft. We also are champions in underwater imaging equipment from side scan sonars that can be towed by a small boat or installed in auto, in, on autonomous undersea systems or, or UUVs for use in mine countermeasures and underwater surveying. One thing I want to talk about is improvements to harbor security. Our Atlas Electronic colleagues in the United Kingdom, they make a sonar underwater that can detect divers and unmanned undersea vehicles, not only detect them, but track them so that we can intercept them. We view this as a big threat to all navies who must go into port where the security is at sometimes the least. So we bring this capability. The Navy is going more to unmanned systems and we feel that we can help the Navy by su supporting their demand for designs for unmanned surface vessels. This is a design concept of the unmanned surface vessel medium size, approximately 50 meters in length and perhaps a displacement of 1,500 to 2,000 tons. And it will extend the eyes and ears of the fleet for detections and surveillance through many onboard systems. It will be unmanned, but yet uh, people will come on board to do maintenance at a certain given time, but predominantly being used in an unmanned method. This is the way the U.S. Navy will extend its fleet and extend its reach to uh, protect the global commons. Atlas North America is proud to, to offer solutions like this and Atlas Electronic Products to solve challenges of the Navy, not tomorrow, but today. The scale model I'm standing next to is the Canadian Surface Combatant. It's the design based on the BAE Type 26 Global Combat Ship. It's the design that we chose as the prime contractor for, for the Canadian Surface Combatant Program. Um, we looked at an awful lot of hull platforms uh, over the course of the selection process and we decided that based on Canada's specific requirements, this platform was by far uh, the best suited to meet those, those needs. It also can be reconfigured um, based on the needs for an above water warfare capability. That's why we fit the uh, solid state spy uh, Aegis fire control radar on board. Uh, also it has a 7,000 mile range endurance and it has uh, a reconfigurable mission bay for, for multiple operations such as humanitarian and disaster relief. Lockheed Martin Canada is the prime combat systems integrator. We've submitted the bid uh, with BAE as our design partner. Uh, also Canadian partners L3, uh, MDA, McDonald Detweiler, uh, Ultra Systems and CAE uh, as a training systems partner. Uh, we, we put that team together based on all of the really strong Canadian capabilities within the defense industry, brought that team together to, to help uh, solve the design and put those products on board uh, in order to meet the requirements. We've submitted our bid uh, last year and on the 19th of October we were announced as the preferred bidder. Uh, we are currently in negotiations with the Canadian customer and we expect to be through that uh, in the first quarter of this year and we'll begin the requirements reconciliation phase which will determine the final design of the ship. In June of uh, 2018, we were awarded a contract uh, by the U.S. Coast Guard to conduct uh, 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 UAS services on board the National Security Cutter Fleet. The contract was processed over a period of time. Uh, the final award uh, was in December of 2018, and so now we are ramping up with the U.S. Coast Guard to begin operations on all national security cutters. So it's, uh, it, it has proven, we've been working on board one national security cutter, the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Stratton, and we've uh, had phenomenal success. We've uh, done a great job of maximizing the uh, effectiveness of the national security cutter. Uh, to date, we have uh, helped the, the Coast Guard capture more than 1.5 billion dollars in cocaine uh, and heroin. Uh, it has also helped uh, help. Uh, how do I say? Uh, provided a more safe 
um, working environment for the U.S. Coast Guard by being able to provide a safe oversight of them. And it's also changed the way that they're uh, now conducting operations. Uh, it used to be the, the helicopter or the uh, small boat would, the boarding team would head out and try to uh, catch, capture the vessel. Uh, many times they would capture, many times they would get away. Almost all the time they would throw the cocaine or marijuana over the side. And now with Scan Eagle and the long loiter time uh, of Scan Eagle, they're able to find the target, surveil the target, and wait for the most uh, opportune time when when the drug runners least expect it. And that's when they launch the helicopters and the boat crews. And not only are they able to capture them with the capture the product, and they're capturing their uh, uh, electronic devices as well. We have uh, recently begun uh, delivering system um, integrator systems to the uh, Dutch Navy. We're looking forward to uh, conducting future operations this spring with the Dutch. We have uh, delivered uh, three scanical systems and three integrator systems to date, and uh, they're they're building a very very strong program. And we're looking forward to supporting uh, them and their many missions as well. The integrator is uh, one of our three aircraft. Integrator is the largest of the three. It is a uh, it's an unmanned aircraft that uh, weighs roughly 150 pounds. It uh, provides 450 watts of, of power, and so it's capable of carrying a, a diverse um, a diverse payloads. It can carry more than one payload and gives you long loiter time up to about 18 to 24 hours. The SPY-6 program is uh, now in uh, low-rate initial production. Uh, we have four uh, radars on contract today, and we expect three more radars to be put on contract in April of this coming year. In addition to that, the ESER program, the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar Program, is getting ready for testing this spring at Wallops Island, so it'll go in production later on this year. So the SPY-6 V1, which is known as the AMDR radar, that's for the DDG Flight 3 program. And that's a 37 RMA, RMAs are radar modular assemblies, which are building blocks, 37 RMAs for that, for that ship set. ESER, Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, is a smaller version of the same radar. Nine RMAs, or radar module assemblies, that are assembled together either in a rotating variant or a fixed face variant. And that's used for some of the uh, amphibs as well as the uh, carriers. Fully digital ESA radars. That's, 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 that's what makes the radar so powerful. It's multi uh, 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 mission uh, capabilities. It can do multiple air and missile defense missions at the same time uh, based on that with digital beamforming.